The struggle on the international stage is also a great one. It's also part of our agenda. Lots of folks here from Latin America, not that much from the rest of the world. But I do want to bring one person up who really rocked it earlier today, talking about the issue of human rights and the drug war. She's a human rights lawyer from New Delhi, India, Tripti Tandon. Come on up, Tripti. Thank you. Hi. Good evening, everyone. I'm really nervous. This is my first DPA conference, and just a couple of minutes ago, maybe an hour ago, I was asked to uh, speak at the closing plenaries. <laughs> really incredibly nervous. But whenever I am nervous, I tell myself something, which is that what comes from the heart goes to the heart, and what comes from the head goes over the head. So <laughs> I'm really going to stick to what's coming from in here. I come from India, a land that lent its name to cannabis, so Mariana, I'm sure all of you remember that cannabis is also called Indian hemp. And the irony is that I came all the way from India to America, the land which is the father or mother of prohibition, to smoke up without the fear of law. <laughs> And uh, while it's been really inspiring to hear all the states here, all the countries that are leading up on, on, on reform, it's really embarrassing to be an Asian, one of the few Asians in this, con uh, this convention, because Asia, as you know, leads on human rights violations, on committing excesses in the name of drug control. And that's why perhaps human rights is such a central issue for us drug policy reformers uh, in Asia. But I also want to be honest and tell you about some of the hypocrisy that you will often see in human rights circle. So when I represent uh, cancer patients who need morphine, I'm looked up as a very respectful lawyer doing a lot of good work. But when I represent someone who actually grew the opium or processed that morphine, I am looked at with a lot of disdain and contempt. And I'm just echoing the sentiments of a colleague from Human Rights Watch who said earlier this morning that while we've come around to applying human rights principles to um, you know, consumption and possession for personal use, we haven't done, uh, done that around with production, sale, and trade uh, in, in drugs. And I think this is really one of the big limitations for us in the human rights movement. But I think this is where the DPA conference has been such a refreshing change for me. Because even though people are, you know, down the corridor and whisper, said, you know, DPA doesn't do human rights work. DPA does some other stuff. They're not really involved in international human rights and, and the drug war. But actually, you embrace everyone across the spectrum. Everyone who's involved in drugs, whether they're users, whether they're growers, whether they're dealers, whether they're persons incarcerated, and irrespective of what they're incarcerated for, you stand up for all of them. And this is where I find so much inspiration from the conference that um, I am here today. And, uh, it's, it's, in, it's in shock, it's in, in an, like, shock contrast to what our colleagues from the UNODC, I know America doesn't like the UN, but the UN Office on Drugs and Crime, for all of their hypocrisy around, yes, we believe in human rights, and for them, they've converted human rights violations as, okay, these are the unintended consequences of the war on drugs. My challenge is to use the human rights framework to question and dismantle the intended consequences of international drug control. And what I'm going to, what, what I'm really going to take back from here is to be able to answer with confidence to uh, the judge in the Indian Supreme Court who just last month admitted for arguments our uh, challenge to the death penalty for drug offenses when he said, you know, uh, counsel, you're talking about someone who is dealing in not kilos, but quintals of this horrendous contraband and doing it again and again. You're talking about rights of somebody like that. And I want to be able to say to, to him, yes, I am talking about the rights of someone who is selling drugs. Because if it wasn't for prohibition, he would be a very successful and a very respectful businessman. It's prohibition which has made him this. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tripti.